is the first ever carbon neutral torch relay, a small piece of the total footprint of the Olympic Games. I worked with the, um, the Vancouver Organizing Committee for the Olympic Games here in Vancouver and helped them understand what their carbon footprint was forecasted to be. So the Games haven't happened yet, but we went through a process of looking at their planned operations um, and tried to quantify what the carbon footprint would be for the Olympic Games um, from the time they became an organization in 2003 until post-games uh, when they wrap up and uh, disintegrate. So we had to look at quite a few pieces of the puzzle to figure out the carbon footprint. That includes venues, transportation, waste, air travel, accommodations, you name it, if it had a carbon footprint, we looked at it. Typically, you're doing an inventory of something that's already happened. In this case, we're trying to figure out what the footprint is of something that's going to happen. And so you've got added complication of trying to understand what are the operational plans in place and what are the emissions associated with those. How many diesel generators will we use? What is the total draw of electricity that's going to be in each one of those venues? The torch relay, it's in people's minds, people see it and you think it must be huge, but it's really 1% of the footprint. The biggest component of the footprint for the Olympic Games is air travel. will be about 150,000 tonnes of CO2. The footprint as a whole is 268,000 tonnes of carbon. And you can break that into two pieces. One is the direct footprint. The direct footprint is 118,000 tons of CO2 and included there are venues, the torch relay, local transportation, i.e. the motor coaches and the fleet vehicles. The other component there is 150,000 tons of CO2 and that piece is what's called the indirect footprint. It's the pieces that the event doesn't have control over, but that they're part of the event. So the spectators flying into town, the sponsors, the media, all of that component falls into the indirect footprint. The next step is to reduce the emissions. Vanuk had always set out to know its footprint and then be able to reduce its footprint. And so reductions were built in from the beginning in the way they built buildings, in the local transportation strategies. Each strategy really looked at how do you reduce the uh, carbon footprint of the Olympic Games. So the final step is to actually offset the remaining carbon footprint and make an investment in clean technologies, whether that be waste biomass, solar or wind. And that investment becomes the offset for the event. So, for example, a carbon offset project could be something where you're helping an organization or a company switch fuels. So once that company stops using natural gas and switches to, let's say, biomass, uh, you now have a reduction in their carbon footprint. And that reduction is then sold as offsets. So the direct footprint for the Olympic Games is being offset by credits supplied by offsetters and they are BC-based credits um, coming from BC-based companies and so they are high quality coming out of the clean technology industry and really will make a difference here in BC and globally. Great job. Great job. I think the best part for me really was the engage part. So you, the organization understands its footprint, it reduces its footprint, it offsets its footprint, but it's engaging other organizations. And the opportunity to work with the sponsors and the government and the media to, and seeing them step up and take responsibility has just been a, a great opportunity to, to reach organizations that uh, we hadn't otherwise had the opportunity to talk to. We've taken the Olympic Games beyond where it had gone before. We've really made some big steps and hopefully we've set the bar high for future um, organizing committees. My advice to anyone out there that's an event planner, venue owner, a sports team owner, is to get in touch with offsetters and let us help you understand what your carbon footprint is.